With all of his super, wait. With all of his superpowers, Superman would be any scientist's dream device. For doctors, he could scan people for injuries, but you wouldn't be able to see those x-rays. For biologists, he could help freeze biological samples. And at least according to pop culture canon, for geologists and jewelers, Superman could be even more valuable. But is there a real way that Superman could crush dirt into diamonds? Ooh. <laughs> now I can't say that this is all Superman's fault, but his movies and comic books have definitely added to the common belief that if mineral or organic sediment like coal is squeezed hard enough, a superhero or the earth could form a large shiny diamond. I've heard this claim since I was a kid and have seen it in other pop culture stories too. Is there any truth to this supposed process? And if so, could soups pull it off? First, although diamonds are considered rare on Earth, what they are made of, carbon, is actually the fourth most abundant element in the universe. Carbon, along with other heavy elements in the universe that aren't hydrogen and helium, are formed in the cores of giant stars when three helium nuclei smash together and fuse at the exact same moment. Now, this carbon is trapped inside of these stars until they collapse and explode in a supernova, throwing out all these heavy elements across the cosmos. And eventually, this gas and dust can find itself accreting into something like a planet like ours. And then that carbon can find its way through various processes into the air, into the ground, and even perhaps into life. You are quite literally a sentient sprinkling of this stardust. Oh, that was Krypton, it's, it's gone now. Carbon is in so many things because it bonds to so many different atoms in so many different ways. It bonds with nitrogen like this to form cyanides, like the cyanide that could be on Poison Ivy's lips. It bonds with hydrogen like this to form methane, the main component in natural gas. Carbon also bonds with oxygen and hydrogen to form sucrose, or just regular old table sugar. Carbon does this with literally thousands of different configurations. But for our purposes, carbon is also really good at just bonding with itself. Different arrangements of carbon bonded with itself are called allotropes of carbon. And allotropes can range from carbon nanotubes to diamonds to graphite, like you'd find in pencils. Super strength sucks. Notice that I didn't mention coal as an allotrope of carbon, but coal is the most common material that Superman is seen squeezing in this trope, so let's look into it. Coal is mostly the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur of living things smooshed over time into sediment and compressed and heated by the weight of the earth above it. Now, coal may not be an allotrope of carbon, but the carbon is there. So couldn't Superman, with his super strength and super heat vision, just add some super pressure and super heat to make this carbon cooperate? Become bling, I command you! Well, the Earth is really good at making diamonds, and coal is almost never a part of the equation. Ooh, who am I now? Is that Kyle? Who could say? <laughs> carbon doesn't just exist as normal carbon here on Earth. It also exists as C13, carbon with an extra neutron, and C14, which is radioactive. Now, because C14 is radioactive, it breaks down over time. Assuming that organisms on Earth have the same ratio of C14 to C12 atoms in their bodies that the Earth has in everything else, like the air, about one in a trillion, then when this organism stops organisming, or living, as I guess some people would say, this ratio in relation to the rest of the Earth's ratio is gonna start to change because the C14 is gonna break down at a specific rate called half-life. Now, working backwards, you can use this as a form of radiometric dating. This is radiocarbon dating to work out how long ago something died to about 50,000 years. However, there isn't enough carbon-14 in either coal or diamond to radiocarbon date them. They are geologically too old. And so other elements like potassium or uranium with much longer half-lives are used. 
When this kind of dating is done, what we find is that on the 4.54 billion year long timeline that is the Earth's existence, the first plants, and therefore the first plants to become the first coal, only happened 300 million years ago, while the first diamonds formed 3.5 billion years ago, almost as old as the Earth itself. And so, because the first diamonds preceded the first plants, diamonds couldn't have come from coal. Oh, let me just turn back the timeline of the Earth here, reverse the spit, oops, that doesn't make sense. Diamonds form hundreds of kilometers underneath the surface of the Earth, where gigapascals of pressure and thousands of degrees form the carbon into the crystals that shall become bling. We only find these diamonds at the surface because they tend to ride volcanic eruptions up to us, and then we crack into the volcanic rock to get at them. The rest of natural diamonds form from the pressures and temperatures associated ooh, with ah, meteor strikes and when the Earth pulls its crust into itself and creates those pressures and temperatures necessary. I'd wager that every diamond you've ever seen is either synthetic or created in one of these ways. So unlike a very common belief, almost all diamonds have nothing to do with coal. But Superman could still crush something to make ice. Ooh. Squeeze a piece of coal Superman style and you're not gonna get some gleaming gem. You're gonna get some weird dirt. That's because diamond has a carbon purity of one contaminant per every million carbon atoms. Coal has one contaminant per every 10. But what Superman could squeeze to make a diamond is just as available as coal. Pencil, I mean, Graphite, in the pen, ow, hot, <laughs> graphite. Now imagine these diagrams are sheets of carbon atoms stacked on top of each other. That's what graphite is. It's what allows the graphite to slide off the tip of a pencil and come onto your paper. Now experiments have shown that there are a few ways to get this structure to transform from its allotrope of graphite into the other allotrope, diamond, using just temperature and pressure. The first way is to use that temperature and pressure to force the carbon atoms to bend kind of like into tiny atomic boats and they get so close that they bond to each other and form a diamond-like structure. The second way is more or less the same except that the carbon atoms bend kind of looking like tiny atomic chairs and then they go from the graphite structure to a diamond structure. According to this research and other research like it, here is the sciencey way that Superman could actually make diamonds. Based on the pressure it takes to force a change in the structure of graphite and an average value for the surface area of dude hands, all Superman would have to do is take a pile of graphite and apply a force to it in the neighborhood of uh, 500 million newtons, or 100 million pounds of force. He's canonically that strong while heating up that pile of graphite to a temperature over a thousand degrees Celsius. He has heat vision. So using both powers simultaneously, Superman could theoretically change the structure of graphite. He could make two carat diamonds out of number twos. Pencils, num num number two pencils. So how could Superman make diamonds with science? Well, it has nothing to do with using coal, a surprisingly common belief. Diamonds formed almost as long ago as the Earth did, before plants even existed, so that's just not possible. What Superman could do, though, is race around the world, slowly grabbing every graphite pencil and then methodically using pressure and temperature to turn those pencils, graphite, into diamonds, flooding the world's market with diamond money and upending the global economy and such. That sounds more like a Lex Luthor plan, but it is theoretically possible. The most fun kind of possible. Because science. His logo looks a lot like a diamond. You know where else Superman can get graphite? I mean, we have a lot of it, so theoretically he could make a lot of diamonds. Easier than making it out of coal, which he 
couldn't do, unless you want tiny little, he could get, he could get it from me, in my hand. See, when I was a kid, I stabbed myself with a pencil accidentally, and then right here, if you just get close, yeah, get cl yeah, see that? See the little gray dot right here? That's just a diamond waiting to be made. Your move, soups, or man. Thank you so much for watching, Tom. If you liked this episode, make sure to like and subscribe on Facebook and on YouTube and hit that notification button. Fam? Is that what the kids say? Cool. Also, if you want more of me, you can go back to Nerdist.com for more videos or you can check out my Squatch with me and Dan Casey or the space program on ProjectAlpha.com. If you go to ProjectAlpha.com and sign up for a free 30-day trial right now, you can get this show, Because Science, two days earlier than anyone else. And you can get hints on what's coming next here.